Ikea reached out to me and asked if I wanted to test out their new laser. Okay, the K124 it is? I've never heard of you, but sure, let's go ahead and give it a try, shall we? As I mentioned, I never heard of this brand called Ikea before. However, in their email, when they asked if I wanted to review their new laser, they mentioned that um, they're actually now part of the Atom Stack family, and this is now their high-end laser. So when you hear the, the brand name Ikea, now you know that it is a Atom Stack product, and it's more geared towards their high-end line. So let's dive in and find out a little bit more about these machines. At the time of release of this video, the machine that I'm currently going to review is $1199. That's for the 24 watt. And it has a build volume of 410 by 410. So you can fit a lot of projects and stuff in there. This is a true 24 watt. It has four 6 watt dial lasers for a combined output of 24 watts. Now this also has autofocus. Yes, no more manual focusing. And it syncs. That means that you could uh, program it to, for each pass, lower itself to maintain focusing, cutting thicker materials. It moves smoothly with the linear rails on the X and smooth rods on the Y. And this baby can move up to 800 millimeters per second. And of course, it has a 32-bit board help with processing power. That's what they claim anyways. No more turning on and off the air assist. Now this air assist can be software driven within Lightburn. And you can work on files offline. It has a 4.3 inch display that you actually might use. And a first resume engraving upon a power loss. And I believe this is while you're only working offline. Plenty of safety precautions, tilt, fire, limit switches, and a key lock. And that is just a quick overview of the iCare K1. And here's the box. Yes, um, you got the K1, K1 Pro, and Ultra. Oh, well, I got the K1 Pro. And it's kind of the same boring boxes that you tend to expect nowadays. Um, there's not really a push to make these like um, on the shelf you know, marketing friendly type of thing. Still get what you get. And you raise the foam and actually have a nice little brochure here. Um, but it is definitely lacking in, um, let's just say, uh, <laughs> information, so to speak. Very, very, very basic. But it's uh, got pictures. So if you like pictures, there you go. You got another sheet here for some light burn settings and how to use the air assist. And last but not least, this is the builder's guide. Oh, and um, it's just uh, pretty basic. Just walking through uh, and starting screws and stuff. Oh, let's go ahead and take everything out. First thing I'll notice uh, when taking out all of this, the quality of these components are absolutely amazing. Yeah, I'm gushing over this. It is exceeding what I expected right during this unboxing here. All of the fit and finish look great. Now it's going to take a little while to build it and each of these baggies has a uh, step on it. Each corner is practically the same with four screws and you can go ahead and tighten them down. You know why? Because look at this. It just slides right together. <laughs> it lines itself up and if you have a power screwdriver, it'll make nice short work of getting this done faster. No worries. If you like the manual way, it does come with the Allen keys necessary to assemble it, the whole thing. But again, I like speed and efficiency when assembling things now. This is where we insert the transfer shaft through the hole. And it's going to be a little snug, possibly. Now we're going to take the transfer shaft and insert it into the coupler and tighten down the little grub screw. Now you're going to have the little idler in here that you're going to need to tighten down. There's two grub screws in here. So go ahead and give it a little bit of a turn and tighten down the second one. There you go. Not too difficult. Belts are a little loose, so we want to make sure that uh, these x-axis sliders are moved all the way down. Because we're going to now put our gantry across the top of it. 
then the gantry has those little notches. We're going to remove the cover temporarily on there and this is where we're going to insert four screws. We're going to secure the X axis to the Y axis sliders with just four screws. Make sure they're snug, not over tighten. And then we can actually take a peek and look at the linear rods, smooth rods, and linear rails in here. Pretty nice. You're going to know that uh, it's going to have some smooth operation. Now this machine has limit switches on all axes, but you have to um, install this one, which I find rather odd, but okay. Just takes two screws, and then you can go ahead and plug it in. Again, this is the only one that you have to install. Don't know why they chose for you to install it here. Now we're going to just try to get this routing cable plugged in on the other side. Very difficult to get the camera to see it. There you go. But yep, we're going to plug that in. And we're going to just go ahead and plug in the stepper motor behind the display control box. Now we just have two more connectors to connect. And these are on the X axis. And you're going to want to make sure that the cover is lifted. And turn it a little bit to see the other one. It's a little difficult to align up to snap in, but once you do, it's in there. Now you gotta tuck both of them in, and we gotta close it and secure it with four screws. And um, yeah, eventually I get it. And just four little screws to place the cover and tighten it down, and we're all done with it. Now we're going to tighten the belts. I'm going to uh, unscrew that screw that was already tightened by the factory and now we're going to add some tension. So you have to actually loosen that screw on the left there because um, it's what secures the belt in place after you get to the correct tightness. So I'm just uh, adjusting the screw and it's pulling that belt towards me and once I get to the correct tightness that I want I then tighten that screw. You can do that for both sides. Then we connect the HDMI to the display to the control box and it has a magnet to hold the display in place. And here it is, the 24 watt laser module. It's definitely a pretty nice module with the autofocus and guide, laser guides and the power meter in the front and built in air assist. Let's go ahead and plug it in right here. That's for your, uh, your sensor on the bottom. It's basically a limit switch. Slide it in. There's two grub screws that are kind of hidden in here. So you want to unscrew them first, put your slide in your dovetailed laser module in there and secure both of them in place. I didn't even see these grub screws when I first saw it. That's not even in the documentation. And go ahead and plug in the top. Put the keys in, power it up, connect by USB, and now let's get Lightburn going. So I wanted to give the auto detect feature a try for light burn. Let's see if that works. So we're going to just fire it up, get it, fire it up, click next, and let's see if it detects it. And boom, it actually did. When a few lasers that it does. And let's go ahead and hit next, and we're going to just rename it to whatever you want. You see the dimensions are in there correctly, 410, 410. Then we're going to click on next, and we want it to home in the lower left. And then we're going to just hit uh, finish. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this my default laser for testing purposes, of course. Now we're going to enable a macro. You're going to right click it, and this is going to be for the autofocus. We're going to rename it and just name it to whatever you want. We're going to just call this autofocus. And now we're going to do the command bracket ESP 500 bracket. And then we're going to just hit OK. Then we're going to open device settings. And we're going to make sure that we, in the Z control in the upper right, we're going to just go ahead and click on Enable. And then you're going to click on OK. And that's it for setting up your autofocus. Go ahead and place the material underneath. Click on Autofocus. And look at that. Huh. I have, I don't know, done a dozen laser reviews. And this is the first gantry laser that I have, open laser that has autofocus. Basically it has a limit switch underneath, clicks down on the material, and then raises to the appropriate focusing height. Now you could actually, since you have a motorized Z, you could do auto syncing. And what that does is per pass, if you want to engrave deeper, you can set it to go deeper. So after each pass, I'm going to set this like to 0.5 millimeters. For, so after every pass, the Z will drop down 0.5 millimeters. 
That's pretty cool. Now that the machine's almost fully assembled and ready to go, let's talk about today's video sponsor, PCBWay. Are you looking for a PCB manufacturer? Well, look no further. PCBWay offers standard PCBs, advanced PCBs, flexible and rigid PCBs. They offer assembly as well. Do you need SMD or stencils? They do that. Also, they do CNC and 3D printing. That's pretty cool. Even do sheet metal <laughs> and injection molding. You want to work on a project? Just head on over to the shared projects area. Find a project that you may want to work on, order it, and go ahead and start learning all about electronics. It's a great way to get started. I'd like to thank PCBWay for sponsoring today's video of the iCure K1 Pro. So let's go ahead and continue testing and see how that machine works. Thanks again, PCBWay. And now it is disclaimer time. Yes, disclaimer. Safety first. This video is for entertainment purposes only. You are following these instructions at your own risk. Always wear approved eye protection. People and animals not wearing protection should stay away. I am not responsible if you do not become a pro after watching this video. I am operating this laser in a well-ventilated area and I'll be using a fume extracting unit or I'll vent it outside. I would suggest that you do the same. A lot of these um, off gases could be very, very harmful. So please, please use the correct safety precautions when using these machines. Well, so far fit, finish and setup has been pretty darn easy. So how's the rest of it though? So let's go ahead and kick off some uh, test engravings, shall we? Let's go through some tests, shall we? Okay, here we have some basswood. This is just three millimeters. And this is just a patent of a four-wheeler. And this was at 60% power at 60 millimeters per second. Uh, it ran a little bit hot, it looks like, but overall, it came out rather nice. Also, I had the air assist a little bit low. I think I should have cranked it up a little bit more for this one, but that's what tests are for. And there was no material settings to go off of. We'll go through that a little bit later. Next, I want to do a cut-through test. And this is, again, 3 millimeter basswood. It was at 95% power and 15 millimeters per second. And almost everything fell out except for that one part of that D. But look how thin those are. Very, very well done. Accuracy is really nice. And the air assist worked really good on that. I decided to test out their mobile app and do an engraving, and it did really well. Uh, fortunately, the mobile app needs some work. It's missing some settings, but uh, as you see, it uh, did very well. Again, this is, you're fighting the grain here, so you see the lines of the grain from the wood. But overall, I think it did a pretty good job. Now, let me zoom out because... Uh, I've always wanted to do this. This is the Declaration of Independence at 37% uh, power, 100 millimeters per second, one pass. And I have to say, it came out really nice. This was a trace off of the original. So when we zoom in here, you will see some imperfections, but otherwise it is very, very legible, especially for how small it is. Yeah. Yeah, there's a little bit of charring around the edges, but Let's you know, take care of that with some uh, sandpaper. But I, like I said, I've always wanted to do this, and it just came out amazing. And I'll include the link for uh, the purchase it down below. I had to modify <laughs> and do a couple of tracing cleanups, but I got it to work. So let's continue on to the next engraving, shall we? And the next one will be this dog tag. This is stainless steel and I want everyone to remember here the 1064 nanometer will 
engraved stainless steel, not a 455 like this, but it did a really good job at 100% power at 20 millimeters per second. Think about it as marking this stainless steel, not engraving, but it's pretty much permanent. Next is a glass coaster. What I do is I take some tempera paint, it's washable, and I use that as my interface layer. This was done at 100% power at 100 millimeters per second. And after it's done engraving, all you do is wash it off with warm water. And that's it. And the glass is permanently etched. It came out great. However, I know a lot of people are here to see how powerful the laser is. And this is MDF. It's just over 11 millimeters in thickness. And I had to do two passes at 100% uh, power, 2.5 millimeters per second. And the more powerful the laser just means that you could get your jobs done faster. Sure, you could cut thicker materials at one pass, but you always want to make sure that you monitor it, the laser at all times, whether you're cutting, engraving, no matter what. Don't leave it unattended. And because you have a greater risk while cutting things of things catching on fire. So where are my thoughts of this iCare K1 Pro 24 watt laser engraver? Well, let me tell you. Let's go over some of the pluses. You got a touchscreen that somewhat usable. Sorry, I didn't go over it, but uh, construction is absolutely amazing. The wire management is really good. Of course, you got the autofocus Z, and you have the infrared marking there to help outline your job positioning. And you have the air assist that is controlled by LiPorn. You just go ahead and adjust the, the flow right there, and it plugs right into the side, and the main board controls it. A key lock, so kids don't get into it. Oh. Where are the minuses? I had to really be nitpicky here. This cord just needs to be a little bit longer. It chafes along it as the Z goes up and down. The mobile app definitely needs some work. It doesn't have any material settings. It is very usable though, but it you could tell that it's in its infancy. Speaking of uh, material settings, when I received this uh, laser, there was no uh, recommended material settings, so I had to go off experience. And all the settings I gave you is just a baseline. And mine were at millimeters per second. And now iCare has um, a chart here for millimeters per minute. And this is a baseline, so if you are looking to start engraving or cutting, this is just recommended. Remember, all materials can behave differently. I can say that I really enjoyed using this laser and there's definitely more positives than negatives with this unit. It's definitely a top tier laser. If you're looking to purchase it, affiliate links are below and it costs you no more to use my link than to purchase it elsewhere, but it just helps support the channel. But I'd like you to stick around because we're not quite done yet because uh, you'll see. I did a poll and someone recommended I laser engrave some dog treats. Thank you, Lisa, for the recommendation, and my puppies will appreciate it because they don't have any taste buds. Got one for Oreo and one for Bear. <laughs> Got a nice little deep engraving, too. Yeah, the other way. And you just walk away. Okay, I see how it is.